Hello, this is another video for my students. I'm going to go through a series of passes on a regulator today, um, or tonight actually. I'm going to do it a little differently. First of all, I'm going to show you the practical test, and then I'm going to try and zoom in on the circuit so you can see and I, I can explain how things work. But this is the basic circuit here. Um, I've sketched out a rough schematic. It's just a very simple series passes on a regulator. We've got uh, an AC supply, that's the AC supply going into the circuit and uh, I've got an oscilloscope set up here and this is set to, uh, the coupling is DC and if just to do a couple of tests really if I just pop the, there's the output there and you can see, you may be able to see possibly, I don't know, but it's uh, 5 volts per division and this is a 0 volt line so we've got an, an input here of about uh, or an output, sorry, of the bridge rectifier of about 12 to 13 volts. And if I go to the emitter, that's the output here on the schematic, I'll show you this in a bit anyway. If we go to the emitter, the emitter is given 5 volts out there. So you can see the difference here. You can see that this is also, probably just about to see that's quite a wavy line, and this is nice and straight. If I change this coupling over to AC so we can zoom in on the ripple, so I hit the coupling button here, come on, then hit AC, and then look at this again. It's taken all the DC out of the signal. I can zoom in at the moment with five, 5 volts per division. As we zoom in, you can start to see that ripple. That's the ripple on the input there. We'll just change the time base so you can see that's the capacitor charging and discharging. If I was to remove the capacitor, and what do we do? We go back to DC again. So back to DC and change the volts per division. Bang, 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 bang. I'm just going to remove the capacitor from the equation here. Working on live electronics, extremely dangerous. Don't try this at home. Oh, no. There you can see that that's the that's the output of the full wave bridge rectifier without the capacitor, and of course when we pop the capacitor back in, you've already seen it. But just to make the point, that's why the capacitor is so important in this circuit. Okay, and uh, just for the sake of completeness, really, pop back to AC coupling and our input. We can see here is AC, sort of anyway. <laughs> okay, so that's all the testing done. That, that is the circuit working. I'm going to attempt to, now anyway, explain exactly how this circuit works. With the, with the schematic, I'll disconnect that from the power supply for the time being. Hopefully it won't blow up. Okay. Try not to short those out. I'm going to be using those for another vid video later. Because it's video night for me. I'm going to come in nice and close now. So I'm going to disconnect and hook the camera so I can get in up close and personal with this circuit. Perhaps not that up close and personal. Right then. This is awkward. So these diodes here, that they form what's called a full wave bridge rectifier. And there's four of them. You need four for a full wave bridge rectifier. And this is the AC input here. So here's our AC input there. And that will connect to our circuit here and here. These are the junction of both the diodes there and there. Okay. The smoothing capacitor is in parallel with the full wave bridge rectifier. That's here. And that's our smoothing... This is awkward. <laughs> and here is our smoothing capacitor there. And here I've used the, uh, uh, the variable resistor on the schematic, and that connects 
to the base of the transistor and to the cathode of the Zener regulator. And here's our transistor here on the circuit there. Oh, this is a mare, this really is. And then we've got our electrical load here. That goes down to ground. And on the schematic, that's the electrical load there. So, in a real circuit, that would be, I don't know, whatever it is you're trying to power with your regulator. It's it, Even in a close-up like this, it's extremely difficult to show all of the detail in this circuit. You need to get used to tracing schematics and building circuits from them, but that's for another video. Let's do the explanation now. Okay, I'm going to do this with some diagrams. Our IC input, as we've shown, is connected to the junction of two sets of diodes. And we're going to imagine that initially this terminal here, doesn't matter which one, but this terminal, the voltage is beginning to rise. When that voltage rises above 0 0.6 volts, which is the switch on voltage for the diode, the diode will begin to conduct. When it conducts, the current which is flowing in this direction, here, cannot go through the capacitor because the capacitor, you'll recall, blocks direct current. Therefore, it can't actually go through this diode because this diode is reverse biased. So the current has to flow through the other components in the circuit. When it gets to this point of the circuit here, remember the current is trying to get back to the AC supply and therefore if this is positive this must be negative with respect to this terminal. This terminal must be negative with respect to this terminal. So in order for the current to get back to the AC supply it can't go through this diode here because this diode has no potential difference across it. But this diode will have a potential difference and we will drop a further 0 0.6 volts and this diode will conduct. So in terms of electron conduction, if that's how you want to view this, this diode will conduct, it will flow through the circuit and get back to the other terminal there. For the other 50% of the time, the polarities swap over. So this terminal becomes negative and this terminal becomes positive. This time, the top right diode will conduct and the bottom left diode will conduct. But the key point to note is that the current flows in the same direction in the external circuit. So the input is AC here, but when without the capacitor connected, when we measure, my pen's running out, don't run out pen. Hope you can see this by the way. When we measure that, as I showed you earlier, we've got direct current. It's very unsmooth direct current, but it's still direct current. And both of the, the each negative going swing of the input has been converted to a positive swing. But for a regulator, that's probably only about a third of the story. The next part is the capacitor, which I showed you in the practical bit as well. And how does that work? Well, if we think that the capacitor... As this diode, when, once this diode begins to conduct, the capacitor will begin to charge instantaneously. That's because there's no resistance between the output of the diode and the capacitor itself. Okay, so it will begin to charge, 
at the same rate of the rise of voltage until the diode reaches its peak of conduction and then begins to fall away. So the output of the bridge re rectifier begins to fall away. The capacitor then, because it no longer has a, a, a charging voltage, will look to discharge. But it can't discharge through either of the diodes because they are reverse biased. Therefore, it must discharge through the external circuit here. And the rate of discharge will depend upon the total resistance of this part of the circuit. But you can rest assured that, generally speaking, it will be relatively high. And therefore, the rate of discharge will not be as fast as the rate of charge. And the capacitor will discharge until the input rises again. Charge, discharge, charge, discharge. And we've reached a situation now where we've got a smoothed output to the full wave from the full wave bridge rectifier. But in terms of voltage regulation, that's still not going to be enough. Regulation, voltage regulation, the term really means that here, at this point of the circuit, if we've got a 5 volt regulator, a regulated voltage will maintain 5 volts at this point in spite of changes in the resistance of the electrical load. So, for example, as we know, Ohm's law tells us that voltage is equal to I times R like so. If we change this electrical load so more current flows through it, okay, that means lowering the electrical load, what has to happen is this transistor has to be able to change its internal resistance to compensate for the reduction in electrical load and also to allow enough current to flow through to maintain this 5 volts here. So the next part of the circuit we, we have a, a xenodiode and the xenodiode has a resistor in series with it. And what all the resistor is really doing in this circuit is it's maintaining what's called the zener current. The zener will need roughly 5 to 10 milliamps in order to operate. So the whole point of this resistor here is to ensure that the zener gets its operating current. This is a 5 volt 6 zener. Like that and we've roughly got I think it's 12 volts here at this point which means that we're going to have is my maths any good we will see 6.4 volts across this resistor so to choose this value if we've got a zener current of 10 milliamps 0.01 is equal to 6.4, that's the voltage, divided by that resistor there. So if you swap this around, you're going to have about 640 ohms. Would be a relatively suitable value for that resistor. Now, if you choose this resistor carefully, and according to that sort of rule of thumb there, what will happen is that the voltage across the zener will maintain move this in a bit. The voltage across the zener will maintain a steady 5.6 volts. And that 5.6 volts is connected to the base of our transistor. The transistor is connected in something called emitter follower configuration. What that means is that the emitter will follow what happens at the base. So if the base is steady at 5.6 volts, the voltage at the emitter will be 5 volts because we lose 0 0.6 volts across the base emitter junction to switch the transistor on. As long as we maintain a steady zener voltage here, the emitter will faithfully, like a dog almost, 
follow the voltage at the base, even when we change this electrical load around. And that's basically how, how this thing works. It's the simplest, uh, simplest version of a series pass Zener regulator you could probably build, but it's a, a really good learning tool for, for, the, uh, for further study in the field. Okay. Without any questions, just uh, contact me. Hopefully, I've covered most of it. Um, and uh, 